So you're thinking about moving to Orange Beach, Alabama, Gulf Shores and the surrounding areas. Well, today I am going to go over 1031s, uh, how they work and a few key details that you definitely want to be aware of before uh, you go to sell the property that you intend to 1031 the gains on. So you definitely want to check this video out. <music> Hey guys, if this is your first time to the channel, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe button, and ring the little bell so you can be one of the first ones to learn everything there is to know about the current market conditions in Orange Beach, Gulf Shores, and the surrounding area. My name is Aileen Fountain, along with my partner Andy Hollis and our entire team. We do these videos each and every week just to be informative, just to let you know what it's like to actually live here. So whether it's nine days or 90 days from when you're thinking about making your move or buying an investment property, give us a call, shoot us a text, email us, set up a Zoom. We'd love to meet with you face to face. We get calls, texts, and emails from people just like you every single day, and we do absolutely love it. So as I mentioned, I'm going to go over 1031s today, um, some few key details. Uh, I, you need to know that I am not an attorney. Um, you will definitely want to consult an attorney before doing your 1031 and you will need an attorney's help. Um, you will, you will need a 1031 exchange intermediary. Every single one that I have ever done has involved an attorney. Um, I've actually done quite a few myself personally, and I've helped a number of clients over the years, uh, do 1031 exchanges. So, um, they're, they're not that difficult and they're not that intimidating. There are just a few key things you definitely want to know about before you go to sell your property. So I'm going to explain that in this video. Um, so let's, let's take an example here. The property that you want to sell, you purchased for 200,000 and you think it's going to sell for 500,000. So you've got a $300,000 gain there. You can either pay capital gains taxes on it, or you can 1031 into a like kind exchange property and shelter that gain. It's a great way to build wealth and it's a great way to defer taxes. So in this scenario, you have sold a property for $500,000. One of the key details that you need to be aware of is that if you want to shelter the full 300,000, then the property that you 1031 into has to be of equal or greater value to the relinquished property, meaning the property you purchase would have to have a purchase price of $500,000 or higher. You can step up. There's no problem. Stepping down means there's a difference there that then you would have to pay taxes on. So if you bought something that was $400,000, you would not be able to shelter the full 300. You'd only be able to shelter 200 of that and pay the taxes on the difference of the 100,000. So in this scenario, we want to shelter the full 300,000. So we are looking at a replacement property of 500,000 and above. Um, another key detail that you want to understand is that you actually don't receive your proceeds at closing. So when you go to close that property that you're selling, that $300,000 will not come to you. You will want to already have a 1031 tax attorney in place um, because they're going to communicate with the title company. The title company will then wire the funds to the uh, escrow holder, which is the, the intermediary tax exchange holder, typically an attorney. Everyone that I've ever done has involved an attorney. They're going to hold on to your money until it's time to purchase the next property. So the biggest key detail and the thing that you cannot overlook, that you have got to have a plan for, is that once you close on your property, you only have 45 days to identify the replacement property. You typically get to pick up to three properties that you're interested in purchasing, but you only have 45 days to get that list together and to your attorney. So if you are not already thinking about it or you don't have a plan for that money prior to closing, those 45 days can tick away very quickly, put you in a very bad situation. Potentially, you end up buying a property that you really didn't want just to avoid the taxes. Um, I've actually done that myself. Uh, when inventory was super low, I kind of got stuck not being able to find a replacement property and ended up buying some properties that I don't love. So very important to make sure that that window is um, 
properly accounted for. So assuming you've got your properties that you've identified, you get them over to your attorney within that 45 day time frame. Um, you also have six months from the date of closing on your property to close on the new property. So you have plenty of time to get closed on the new property. That's not the issue. The issue is that initial 45 day window of identification. That is to me the biggest hurdle in executing a 1031 properly. So once you've got those properties identified, then you can put a plan in place to close on them. You got to get them under contract and closed, but you have plenty of time for that. Let's say you want to step up and you want to take that. Now you want to buy a million dollar property. You're going to take that $300,000. Um, you plan to put that down on your loan and finance the rest. So you would then have plenty of time to go secure your loan. Uh, put the property under contract, secure your loan, and close. No, no problems there. So then at that point, your 1031 intermediary on closing day will send the $300,000 to the title company, and either you make up the difference through cash or with financing, or perhaps you bought a property right at um, $500,000, and um, you come up with the difference of the $200,000. So I hope that kind of helps explain some of the real key details in executing a 1031. If you do those steps, you will be able to shelter all that gain. You'll be able to buy a replacement property. It does have to be like kind. If you're um, selling a rental property, then you need to be buying another investment property. This is kind of where you really want to talk to an attorney. Um, make sure that the property that you are relinquishing um, make sure you understand the type of property that you need to replace it with in order to qualify. Um, and uh, you definitely want to uh, make sure you understand those timelines because uh, that is huge. If you miss your timeline, say you don't identify the 45 uh, or you don't identify properties in that 45 day time frame, then your attorney then would then have to um, uh, refund your money, wire it back to you, and you would then have to report the, that as capital gains on your tax return. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, 1031s are not challenging at all to do. You just need a little bit of help from an attorney and you need to have a property that you have some equity in that you want to then move into a new property. We do them all the time. Um, excellent way. Lots of people want a uh, investment condo at the beach that they're going to rent out. So a really good way to, to actually get into a uh, condo investment or any rental investment. We have lots of uh, residential houses that short-term rent too. And a great way to build wealth and get a property at the beach. So hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, we hope to see you around town.